Hey, what's up YouTube? Dom the Smartphone Guy coming back at you with another video and tonight I want to talk about why I hate this device here, the iPhone 10. So I've had the iPhone 10 now for five days and I just want to talk about what I really dislike about this phone. So the first thing that I really dislike about this phone is how much I like it. I hate that I spent so much money on this phone and that I really, really like it. I will be honest with you, I wanted to tear this phone apart. I wanted to talk about why I think this phone is just crazy to spend this much money on. Because why in the world are we spending over $1,000 for a phone? But I like the phone. Are there certainly things that you can tear this phone apart for? Yeah, if you wanna be nitpicky, there are definitely things about this phone that you can complain about. Face ID doesn't work all the time. It's not as good as Touch ID. For me personally, I'd much rather have a fingerprint, but Face ID works really, really well. Uh, the screen, it's AMOLED, there's a blue shift. Can you complain about it? Yeah, you can complain about it. It's $1,000, it should be perfect, right? It's not, but it's still a really, really good phone. And I wanna go ahead and talk about those things that I, we can be nitpicky and I'm gonna be a little bit nitpicky with the phone, but I, I just wanna talk about what makes this phone worth it or not worth it for you. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So build quality wise, hands down, this phone is just a phenomenal build. There is no doubt about the premium build on this phone. Now, is it a very breakable phone? Yeah, I mean, you can watch YouTube videos where people have done drop tests and things like that. There's no way I'm doing a drop test on this phone because I paid over a thousand dollars for it. But yeah, it, it, you can see that it definitely does not have the most premium build. So I definitely would say, you know, go out and get a case for it. Don't be crazy and rock this thousand dollar phone unless you have money to blow without a case or a screen protector. Invest a little bit of money, $10, $15, to go get a screen protector and a case for your phone. And yeah, you're going to take away some of the beauty of the phone, but for me personally, it's probably worth it. Now, you can spend the money on Apple Care. I personally didn't. And so, you know, uh, for me personally, it's I'm going to wear, I'm going to rock this thing with a case and a screen protector now. Hopefully I don't drop it in the review, but let's just go ahead and say that I, I think that you should get a case and a screen protector for this phone. But with that said, yes, this is a very, very beautiful built phone. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about the performance of this device. So this is rocking the A11 Bionic chip, which in benchmarks scores very, very well. If you're looking at the Geekbench scores, it scores over 10,000, which is far and above any Android phone. Does that render itself as you're using it in day to day? Well, yeah. It, it, it does, it is a very fast phone. And as you're gaming and you're going through different applications, and if you're going from application to application, you can definitely tell that this is a very, very fast phone. Now, is it so much faster than any other Android phone out there? No. In my day-to-day -day usage, I don't really notice the difference between using my uh, iPhone 8 Plus, using the iPhone 10, and going to my Google Pixel 2 XL. In the day-to-day -day performance, the performance is basically about the same. Now, I don't do maybe certain things that require a lot of high-end, like I play games a little bit, not a whole lot of game gaming, but I don't notice it when I play games. The games I do play, I don't notice any difference between the performance. Uh, when I do social media, I don't notice any difference. If I'm on, if I'm just, you know, watching Netflix or YouTube, you know, that's the kind of stuff I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't notice the performance difference between this phone and the higher end Android phones. So performance wise, yes, this is a fantastic phone, but it's not that much faster than any other phone out there. All right, so now it's time to talk about the cameras on the iPhone 10. Are they the best cameras out there? No. Controversy. I don't think that this has the best cameras on any smartphone you can get. In fact, I would say it's probably the second or third best cameras that I've ever had on a smartphone. With that being said, are these cameras phenomenal? Yes, they are absolutely phenomenal. Now, the only phone that I would say I would rather have in my hand if I'm trying to take the best picture that I can possibly take is the Google Pixel 2 XL. For me, both front-facing and rear-facing cameras, if we're just talking about still photos, the Google Pixel 2 XL for me just takes the better photos. Now. This does, in some case, take better photos than that phone. So I'm not going to say that this is always the phone, or that's always the phone I'd rather have. But in most cases, I would say, you know, probably 7 out of 10 times, I'd rather have the Google Pixel 2 XL in terms of the camera quality. Now, this is still a phenomenal camera. The rear-facing camera with the portrait mode and just in general 
takes excellent photos. There's no question about it. They're very clear, crisp, and very well um, just saturated, things like that. Just really good pictures. On the front-facing camera, I would say that this also takes really good pictures and the portrait mode is awesome, but it does tend to soften the edges a little bit too much compared to the Google Pixel 2 XL. I think the Pixel 2 XL does a little bit better job of taking uh, selfies in portrait mode, but both cameras take very good front-facing pictures. So if you're in the selfie game, this is definitely a fantastic phone, and the portrait mode is really cool. It, just every once in a while, you're gonna have to take a second picture because sometimes it will soften the edges a little too much. So that would be just a slight complaint. Now, in terms of video quality, this is shooting at 4K at 60 frames per second, or you can shoot up to 4K and 60 frames per second but if I had to choose one phone that I would take all of my video with it would actually be the phone that I'm shooting this with right now that's the HTC 11 and I still think that there is no phone that I've used and I've used all of the flagships with the one exception the LG V30 but the only phone that I take do almost all of my videos with is the HTC 11 despite all of the other phones that I've had since then so camera quality wise this phone is very 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 good it takes phenomenal pictures is it the best out there? I would argue no. It's very good though. All right, so the next area I wanna talk about is the battery life. So battery life wise, this thing is getting me through most days. Um, I'm generally getting through a day of very heavy usage. So we're talking about you know social media, consuming content on YouTube and Netflix and things like that. I can generally get through a day with about 15%. Now that's definitely not the best battery life I've ever getten, gotten out of a phone. Um, but it's still getting me through a day and so that's acceptable. Now, we do have the ability to fast charge and I hate that Apple does not give you a fast charger when you're spending a thousand dollars. Like, what is going on, Apple? Give us the fast charger. We spent a thousand dollars for your phone, but whatever. And also, of course, you can wirelessly charge. It's not fast wireless charging, but it's wireless charging, so it's nice that they included that with this device. So battery-wise, it's still not the best phone out there. It, it, I, the iPhone 8 Plus, I'd rather have my iPhone 8 Plus when it comes to battery life. I could get through a day with about 30% battery life there, uh, sometimes 30 to 40%, whereas with this, I'm getting through a day with about 15 to 20%. So battery life-wise, it's good, not great. Um, next area I wanna talk about is the software. So um, some of the things that you'll notice, obviously there's a lot of changes with this device um, in terms of gestures. So obviously facial unlock is the first thing that you're gonna talk about. And face unlock works really, really well with this. I mean, I wanted to hate face unlock. I hate that they didn't have touch ID. Um, so I wanted to hate face unlock but it works really well. I would say 95% of the time. So there's definitely a 5%. So if you wanna you know, be nitpicky, you can definitely complain about face unlock not working all the time. Um, so I'm wearing my hat, works perfect. I'm wearing my glasses, it still works. Sunglasses that is. I'm wearing, uh, you know, it's pitch black in the middle of the night, it still works. So the only time that I find that it doesn't work is if I you know, just don't have it like perfectly lined up with me. And so like I have to lean over a desk or whatever. And so in that case, sometimes it won't work. Um, but in general, it works really well. So face unlock, I do like software wise. Obviously, we have the gesture based software and I wanted to hate that too, but it works. It does really well. I mean, when we talk about our notifications, when we talk about pulling up our recent apps, it works well. You get used to it really fast, at least in my opinion, I do anyways. It didn't take me much time at all. And I'm typically an Android user, um, but it did, really didn't take me much time at all to get used to the gestures. Um, and I actually like them, I'm used to them now. I mean, I've only had the phone for five days. It's something that I got used to within really the first few hours of using the phone. Um, it's really not something that I mind. Um, Another thing to talk about when, when it comes to the software is the optimization of certain apps. So some apps, like let's say Facebook Messenger, you can see that it takes up basically the entire screen. Now one complaint I will have is that when you go into um, like your, uh, when you're going into your keypad, you can see that there is a kind of a big block of kind of what is wasted space there at the bottom. So that would be just one little complaint about the software, but there are apps that aren't optimized necessarily for the iPhone 10 yet. So there definitely is still some optimization that needs to happen. Um, it first, when uh, when the first phone was first launched, YouTube didn't go to full screen. Now it does. Um, Netflix, you can double tap and make full screen. Most videos the same way. So 
in general, I really do like the software. Obviously, it's the same pretty much as any other iPhone you've ever had, but with all of those gestures, and the gestures work well. So if you like iPhone software, if you're used to Apple software, iOS, yeah, you're gonna like this phone. So the next thing to talk about is the speaker quality. So this, again, has the dual firing speakers, and I gotta say, I don't notice any difference between this and the iPhone 7 Plus. Actually, I should say that. The iPhone 7 Plus, this has better speakers than iPhone 8 Plus when compared to this phone, I would say pretty much the same speaker setup, which is to say they are very good speakers. The front facing, bottom firing speaker, I think that combination for the iPhone works really, really well. And I like the speakers on this phone. So let's just go ahead and take a quick listen to um, one song. Now, obviously you're getting it through a, a filter here. Um, so you're not gonna hear it just as I'm hearing it. All right, so the iPhone 10 has good speakers. Nice low end, they get loud. What can you complain about? Good speakers, I like it. All right, next area to talk about is the audio. Headphone jack doesn't exist. I'd like a headphone jack. Come on, <laughs> why can't we get back the headphone jack? I want the headphone jack back. All right, well, anyways, obviously, I use my AirPods all the time, so it is what it is. Probably gonna wanna use Bluetooth, but of course, you know, at least you get the dongle with the headphones. So yeah, headphone jack, let's get it back. But it is what it is. All right guys, so here's my conclusion of the iPhone 10. So I've only had it for five days, but I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on this phone. I don't hate it. In fact, I really, really like the phone. I didn't wanna like it, but I like it. There are nitpicky things that you can point out with this phone that are flaws. Yeah, there are tiny flaws with the phone. Are they deal breakers? No. Is this a really, really good phone? Yes. Is it worth $1,000? Well, that's up to you. I personally hate that it costs $1,000, but it's a really good phone. So if you want the latest and greatest from Apple, the iPhone 10 is a great phone. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.